Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to look at this current sensor. And this is a high current sensor that will take as an input from 0 up to 30 amps and it can be AC or DC and it will give you a low voltage 0 to 5 volts output proportional to the amps. So um, it's a very nice way if you need to measure high currents um, you can do it very easily with like an Arduino or any data acquisition device because it gives you a 0 to 5 volts output proportional to the input high current. So wonderful little device and we've used it in previous videos. Um, now this is a little bit different from another current sensor we looked at in a recent video. So here is the device we're going to look at and I want to make a distinction between this type of current sensor and the current sensor we looked in a previous video. Um, the previous one is shown here. It's got a current transformer and a little circuitry. And the purpose of this current transformer was uh, specifically, it's used by model railroad hobbyists. And it's designed to determine whether a locomotive is on a section of track. And the way it does this, it's got this current transformer and you feed a wire through it and it senses if the current going to this piece of track, uh, if the current indicates that there is a locomotive on that section of track because the locomotive engine draws current that feeds through here and this basically tells you yes or no. If it, if it sees the current, it will give you a zero output. If there's no current, it'll give you a one output, a voltage output. So it's basically just an on-off sensor to tell you if a section of track is occupied. The difference with this especially is that this is designed to use what you see down here, which is like a 15 kilohertz square wave uh, pulse width modulated um, waveform used by railroad hobbyists uh, to control trains, and that's called Digital Command Control or DCC. And it looks like this. What we're going to look at is a more simplified um, device that just looks at high currents. Uh, it does AC or it does DC, but it's not designed for these high frequencies. It's designed for high currents. And um, we're going to show that we have used this in the past. And we have used this in the past in my other videos to do some really interesting stuff. Uh, for example, we looked at an ATX computer, desktop computer power supply, like you see here. And we were trying to bust the myth that these DC power supplies in the computers are junk. And, and uh, you know, if something happens with your computer or your GPU, your computer will blow up because these things are, are junk. Well, actually, we looked at how these ATX power supplies uh, have to operate by what's called the ATX specification which requires they have internal protection to make sure that bad stuff, you know, if bad stuff happens on your motherboard, if there's a short, this thing will automatically shut down at a certain current. It's got internal protection. So what we did is we used this current sensor to actually test that and we applied a short circuit on a DC ATX power supply, which you see here on the right. Uh, it's a little bit modified. I've made it into a bench power supply, but the internals are basically our computer ATX power supply. And you can hear, see here we've got our current sensor. And what we did is we used this variable rheostat resistor to um, basically apply a short circuit to this. And we used the current sensor to, to measure over time how much current was flowing as we increased the load up to a short circuit. And you can see here on our scope, uh, it went up and up, and finally this thing automatically shut down. So it was a really good way of measuring uh, high currents. In this case, it was it was designed to shut off at 18 amps, and this indicates it shut off at 18 amps. A really useful device. And here are some of the results in Excel of the current it drew. You can see um, over here's in seconds, and here's amps. And it's designed, you can see here, it's designed for 18 amps, and exactly at 18 amps, shut down immediately. So these current sensors are really useful if you want to actually look at stuff and put numbers to it rather than just like many people do, just wave your hands and not really understand. So here's the device we're going to look at. Uh, the brand is Electronic Salon, also CZH Labs, as it says here. Um, 
panel mount ACDC current sensor module based on the ACS 712. Um, this one is plus or minus 20 amps. You can get a plus or minus 30 or you can get a plus or minus 5. Um, why would you want to get the different ones? Why not just get a 30? Well, um, this provides a voltage proportional to the current and the output voltage is going to be something like between 0 and 5 volts. So if you only need 5 amps, you're probably better off getting a 5 amp version because it, it, the output will probably be more accurate. Since it's always like 0 to 5 volts on the output, if you have a, a narrower range input, then the accuracy probably be a little bit better. Um, but it's up to you, whatever you need. They're all cost the same. And that's the device right there. So um, you can see the input, as you can see right here on the right, IP plus and minus is the uh, 5 or 20 or 30 amps coming in. And right here, you've got this little device, which is the heart of this, which is an ACS 712 Hall Effect current sensor. And all it does is it takes the current on one side uh, up to 5 or 20 or 30 amps and uses the magnetic field of that current inside this device to generate a very low voltage, something like 0 to 5 volts, proportional to how much current is flowing. And then it feeds it through the rest of the circuit. We'll talk about that in a bit. And it feeds it to this output. Now, one of the features um, we're going to talk about later is that you can either power this. You can see on the end it says plus 5 volts to power up the circuit. You can either choose 5 volts or you can feed it a VCC here in the middle, which is from 8 to 37 volts. So a lot of this, um, these components in here are what allow you to uh, choose to feed it 8 to 37 volts just to power up this circuit. So that's the device right here. Here's a schematic. You apply the current and here's the output. DC 8 to 35 input or DC 5 volts. And here's a um, circuit we'll, we'll diagram we're going to look at in a bit. And some dimensions and that's about it. Um, also there is a data sheet if you look on Amazon, on this Amazon thing. There's a data sheet which basically gives you uh, a PDF of all this stuff. Really doesn't give you much more. Okay, so let's take a look at the circuit diagram for this current sensor and see what's going on here. There's a lot of stuff here. Um, basically, here on the right is where you apply the current that you're going to measure, the IP minus and the IP plus, And it connects directly into this ACS712, which is the Hall Effect sensor. And this is really the the heart of this device. Um, you basically have to feed it a 5 volt VCC to power it up. And then here is the output that gives you a voltage proportional to the input current. All right. So over here you've got your connector for the output. You've got a ground. You've got your output, which has got the uh, sensing voltage. And then you've got the VCC, ground, and plus 5 volts. So one of the features of this device that you may or may not need is that you can either power up this circuit with a 5 volts, like you see here on terminal 5, and you hook up the 5 volts, and you can see it comes over here and goes directly into this ACS 712 to power it up. Again, this is a 5 volt device. It requires 5 volts VCC to power it. Now, one of the features is that you don't need to use 5 volts. You can use between 8 and 37 volts to power this up. And that's what you can put into this, term this terminal 3 in the VCC. You can supply it with 8 to 37 volts instead of this fixed 5 volts. And it will provide 5 volts to this ACS 712. So how does it do that? Well, all of the circuitry over here um, is what regulates the voltage that you supply, 8 to 37, and puts it into 5 volts. Here you've got an LM317, which is a voltage regulator. And it takes your 8 to 37 volts and gives you an output of 5 volts to power this up. And here you've got a potentiometer to tweak that. But basically, you can see, you put your 8 to 37, it goes in here, comes out, and you've got a diode, so it goes past the diode and feeds 5 volts into this. So either way, no matter whether you power it by 5 volts or 8 to 37 through the voltage regulator, uh, here's where the 5 volts comes to the ACS712, and you've got the 
LED that, that turns on when you power it up and you've got a couple capacitors to um, filter. But basically, all of the stuff over here on the left is not needed if all you're doing is powering it with 5 volts. So it's a very simple circuit. It, it's basically just this ACS712. You put current into it. It gives you the voltage out and you've got to supply 5 volts. So let's briefly take a look at this ACS712. It's in Allegro Microsystems Hall Effect Based Linear Current Sensor IC with 2.1 kV RMS isolation. And um, if you scroll down, you can see it takes 5 volts, single supply operation. And the description here, um, basically you apply 5 volts and take the current in and that's about it. Um, the device has, if you look here, thickness of the copper conductor allows survival of the device at up to five times overcurrent conditions. So if you've got like a 20 amp version, there's shows here there's three versions. There's a plus or minus five amp, plus or minus 20, and plus or minus 30, as you saw before. Um, that's basically comes down to the rating of this ACS712 but it can withstand up to five times overcurrent conditions for a short period of time. Uh, it also has a fuse, I believe, in here. Somewhere it says it's got a fuse in here, um, so you should be good to go. Um, absolute maximum supply voltage, 8 volts. So common operating characteristics, supply voltage between 4.5 and 5.5. And and supply current, um, that's how much the VCC takes, only 10 milliamps. And basically that's it. Uh, again, this, the rating of this um, current sensor is basically dependent on this um, ACS712. Okay, so here we are on the bench and we've got our current sensor right here. And I've got it hooked up to some devices. Uh, here is where you input the um, amps that you're going to measure. And I've got the wires connected to my power supply, which can deliver up to 10 amps. And basically it's coming in one side and going out the other side back to the power supply. Over here I've got this little device, which I've talked about in previous videos. It is a very inexpensive uh, DC voltage regulator. And I have it connected to a um, wall adapter, a variable voltage wall adapter. And I'm going to use it to supply the 5 volts needed by this um, device to power the circuit. Um, I also have here connected to the output of this device my voltmeter. So we're going to measure the volts output from this device as we vary the input. So you can see we're starting out, we got the power supply off, we're seeing zero volts out. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, power this up with my 5 volts. I'm going to plug this in and you can see the light goes on and I have 5 volts. And you may notice over here the output of this device with no current flowing is 2.5 volts. So that's one of the characteristics of this you need to be aware of. With zero volts, it will provide about two and a half volts output. And I believe that is half of whatever you're feeding in as the uh, supply. So if I've got five volts, it's going to be half of that, so two and a half. What that means is with zero amps, you get two and a half volts, but with minus 30 amps, this will go down to zero. With plus 30 amps, it'll go out, it'll go up to a little bit over five volts. So that's how you get the range uh, from minus 30 to 30 amps. This will go from zero to about five, a little over five volts. So it's very important to be aware of that. So with no current flowing, you should expect about two and a half volts coming out. So now let's turn on our power supply and see what happens as we provide current to this device. So I'm turning on, turning on the power supply and I'm going to crank it up to one amp. And right there I've got one amp coming out of the power supply. And you can see I'm getting 2.6 volts instead of 2.5. So what does that tell you? Well, if with zero current you get 2.5 and, and with one amp you get 2.6, that means you probably should get a tenth of a volt for each amp that you put through the device. 
So now I'm going to crank it up to 2 amps instead of 1 amp and see if this goes up to 2.7. So I'm at 1.5, 1.8, and just a little over 2, and there's right at 2, and here we are at 2.7. So now, like we said, um, this allows you to uh, power the circuit with 8 to 37 volts if you want to. If you don't need that, there are other devices out there that are less expensive um, that only um, require plus 5 volts. If you're fine with that, then you can look for other devices. Um, also, one of the nice features of this is the output voltage range is 0 to 5 volts. So if you have a data acquisition device like an Arduino that um, does not accept negative voltages, only wants 0 to 5 volts or whatever, um, this is a nice feature of this. So if you're going to if you're going to use a data acquisition device, make sure that the output of that uh, current sensor doesn't go outside the range of the input of your Arduino or whatever. Um, otherwise, that's about it for this. If you like any of these videos, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.